should I avoid during my immigration process? The answer is very simple. During your immigration process, you should avoid lying. We call it willful misrepresentation, misrepresenting the facts. In this video, I am going to tell you why it's important for you not to lie, not to be caught up in those lies because it's going to damage your reputation and your immigration benefit and pretty much lead into a denial that might be really difficult to overcome in this video my friend let's get right into it number one it's going to cause you delay okay delay in your immigration process why because now they're gonna send requests for evidence letters okay notice of intent to deny letters for you to respond to those facts and pretty much address the fact that you have been lying uh, under oath. Because what is uh, going on is that when people apply, okay, and they're trying to get an immigration benefit, what they fail to realize that before they got here, uh, in the context of uh, adjustment of status, of course, before they got here, maybe they went to an interview, okay, uh, to the um, embassy or maybe they were paroled so they had to go to some type of interview at the border cbp and if you lie to a u.s uh, consulate or immigration officer or on your application for any immigration benefit it is considered willful misrepresentation and it's going to cause a delay and you have to explain yourself as to why you had to lie and some people rely heavily on waivers but you have to realize that well waivers are discretionary measures number one first of all you have to have a qualifying relative it has to be a parent a spouse lawful permanent resident or you a citizen otherwise it's not gonna work the only time a waiver could work for you uh, if you have a u.s citizen and that's if you are in removal proceedings and you have been charged with willful misrepresentation and you want to waive that you can waive that of course you can waive that uh, under that waiver but a specific waiver for immigration proceedings and that's only a judge can grant you that but if you don't find yourself in removal and you don't have a lawful permanent or U.S. citizen spouse or parent, what exactly are you going to do? So that's why we strongly advise that you don't do that just to start with, okay? Number one, delay. Number two, denials, okay? It's, it's just going to get your uh, petition to be denied, really. If you do not qualify for a waiver, and even if you qualify for a waiver, let's just say, for instance, that you qualify for a waiver and you put forth your argument. What if your argument doesn't convince the USCIS officer? What if the, your argument doesn't convince the immigration judge? It's going to get denied. The benefit that you're requesting, it's going to get denied. Number three, it's going to get you deported. Because now you find yourself in removal proceedings, uh, you might say, well, I'm going to apply for a waiver. Well, if the waiver doesn't work for you, or let's say you just don't have those qualifying relatives to actually be uh, a statutory eligible for a waiver, what are you going to do? Find yourself in removal proceedings, and my friend, uh, your benefits, it's going to be denied. You find yourself in removal proceedings, and now you have the order of removal, trying to fight it with BIA, which takes forever to respond. Uh, maybe you might go to federal court to get them to review a BIA uh, decision. And that's a long road. You need to avoid it, okay? The way you're gonna avoid that is this. You're gonna request uh, your file by filing the Freedom of Information request. Request your file so that you can be aware of everything that you have said before so that when you apply for your green card in the context of adjusting status, 
you have all those facts, what was said before and what you are going to say now, so you don't contradict yourself, uh, then you don't get caught into this willful misrepresentation, which is a lie uh, that is pretty much can be forgiven, but not under all circumstances, okay? That's what we are trying to tell you. So we have a case where um, a potential client tried to consult with us because of this willful misrepresentation and now they do not have a qualifying relative uh, for the purpose of applying for a waiver we were trying to find a way uh, to actually defeat uh, that charge by arguing that well this misrepresentation question is not material right we're trying to argue that because we've argued that before with uh, other people and it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I just have to be uh, honest with you. But um, for this particular case, what happened was this person was advised, wrongfully advised uh, by their former attorney to actually say that they have misrepresented facts before, which is not true. What happened was they came by the border and they had the a, 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 they've been per hole and then the officer referred their case they, they had a referral letter for the, their case to be referred to the immigration uh, court so that they can go and defend whatever type of relief they have to defend in court right however what happened was the notice to appear never uh, was never served so they never uh, received any notice to appear their case was never referred to court, so they actually never applied for asylum. But because they told the officer that, yes, of course, if you refer my case to court, I will apply for asylum, it, it was considered as lie. You lied to the officer. But in what context they said that? The context they said that it was because the officer told them that the case was going to be referred to court. So, but now they find themselves into this misrepresentation drama, okay? And then wrongfully advised to actually say, well, I have misrepresented facts, which in fact is not true. So, yeah, bottom of line is this, do not do it. Do not do it. If you know that you did not say it, don't say it, that you say that. And if you're intending to lie, just don't do it because you're going to get your case, not just delay, deny, find yourself in removal, and actually end in ending up with the order of removal, which is not good. Because anytime I decide to access the data and try to remove some people, then your name will pop up. And you don't want to be removed when you're not prepared to be removed. It creates a lot of stress, uh, a lot of hardship on the family, just avoid it okay if you need a consultation with me you can either call me 202-751-2180 email bishu.hungwanda.esq at gmail.com consultation fees apply as usual you can schedule your consultation on your own time by using the link in the description box below until next time bye bye